Should you use Vellum to design your ebooks or your print books if you're self publishing? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. In this video review, I'm going to walk through exactly what Vellum does and how you can use it to design beautiful looking ebooks and books for print. I'm also going to talk about some of the pros and cons of this ebook design software, so if you can figure out if it's the right choice for your self publishing business. Hope you enjoy the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So I've been a Vellum customer for three, maybe four years now, and I've used it to design multiple eBooks and print books myself. In fact, I recently designed my latest book, I Can't Believe I'm a Dad, using Vellum. My, my current workflow involves writing the book in Scrivener as normal. Then I'll export the final manuscript from Scrivener and I'll import it into Vellum and then Vellum will hate me, help me take care of the formatting and design of the ebook. And I'll show you all of that in a moment. But well, firstly, there's a few things that you should know about Vellum. So firstly, Vellum is Mac only, unfortunately. So if you're a Windows user, you're out of luck, which is a big downside to Vellum, to be honest, because many self-published authors are on Windows. That said, you could always uh, set up a version of Mac OS X on your Windows machine using virtualization software. But to be honest, that's a big technical headache and I know many people aren't going to do that. The other caveat with Vellum is it's not the cheapest book design software out there. So at the time of recording this video, this is the current pricing, at least in Ireland or in the European Union. You can create unlimited eBooks for $180, or 180 euro, which is just over $200. Or you can create ebooks and paperbacks for 230 euro, which is about 270, 280 dollars. Uh, it's a once-off payment, so once you pay, you don't have to pay again. But if you're going to invest this much money in book design software, chances are you're publishing lots of books each year, or you're building up a back catalogue of books, or you're serious about your self-publishing business. If, on the other hand, you're only writing and self-publishing one book because it's something on your bucket list you're probably not going to spend this much on book design software in fact you're probably better off outsourcing it and i'll talk about that in a few moments but let's go over to vellum so you can see how it works so i've published uh, over a dozen different types of books over the years if you count all of the different formats and to be honest as a self-published author it's a real pain to keep track of all of the different book formats and files so I have here on the left of the screen a Google folder where I keep all of my files for my book projects. So if I go into one of them to show you an example, which is I can't believe I'm a dad, you can see here I've got folders for the cover, uh, for the actual book files themselves, uh, for marketing materials, and also for the book source files, which in this case is my Scrivener file. So if you're doing all of this yourself, you can end up with a plethora of different files to keep track of. And this is where Vellum can help. It can help create all of these files and organize them for you. So that's one of the first things to know about Vellum. It's good for managing all of the different files and formats you need for the various self-publishing platforms, whether it's Amazon, Kobo, or another platform. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see how it's organized. So these are actually all of my Vellum projects, and I can go into any one of these to edit the book and then compile it for the different uh, book publishing stores. I'm going to show you my workflow for using Vellum. So I'll write my uh, book, uh, like I can't believe I'm a dad in Scrivener. And then once I've done all my edits and when I've got the final version of the book, I will simply use Scrivener to compile a draft for Vellum. Alternatively, if you're in Word, you can just save it as a Word document and import that into Vellum. So I'm gonna click compile and then I'm going to create a Word document and import that into Vellum so you can see how it will work. Now you may be wondering at this point, why not use Scrivener to do this if I'm writing a long form books and Scrivener does have options for compiling a book draft. But to be honest, I find Vellum a little bit quicker and easier to use and I prefer the formats and templates inside of Vellum, but you can use Scrivener. So that is a key takeaway if you're looking for an alternative. So now I've compiled my Word document and I'm gonna import it into Vellum. So I'm gonna click on file and I'm gonna click on new book and you can actually use Vellum to manage your, book, your box sets as well if you've got lots of different books. But in this case, I'm going to click import Word file uh, and then I'm going to look for the Word file that I've uh, compiled. So here it is, Parenting V2. And now you can see Vellum has brought in the Word document into, uh, into the editor. And now I can go through it and format it. And if you have your, Word, your Scrivener file project formatted correctly with headings, subheadings, and so on, it will carry over as much of this as it can for you. But you're still going to need to go through it and to identify what's a chapter uh, versus watch a sec section in a chapter. To show you how that works, I'm gonna go through the um, 
one of the chapters in the book which is called D-Day. So this is actually a, a poem or a haiku that I wrote for the start of the book. So I'm going to click on the star here and change this to a verse. And then I'm going to make sure this is in uh, italics, which it is. And then I can go down through the book and I would, instead of having this in bold, I would actually change this to a subheading. And then if I scroll down further through the book, I, I would also change this to a subhead. And finally, I have some tips at the end of the chapter. So uh, I'm going to put in an ornamental break. And then if I go to the right hand side of the screen, I can preview what my changes will look like. So I can click through this and visually inspect what the book is going to be like before I compile it for print. Um, the other thing is you can also add footnotes into your book. So if you've got your footnotes or citations done in Word or Scrivener, it will carry them through automatically. So you can see here, I have a citation uh, for a study that Dr. Martin Greenberg uh, published back in the 1970s about parenting. And if I click on this, it will actually give me the link that it's pulled through from Scrivener. But you can add these manually as well. So some, you can just select some text and then you can just click EndNote and then just type in your citation. Uh, and it will compile them with the final version uh, of your book. So my workflow would involve going through each of the chapters in the book, making sure that I've added the subheadings, the endnotes, uh, and any ornamental breaks, and so on. I would also preview what each chapter looks like on the right-hand side. If I click on this icon here, I can preview it on Kindle Fire and iPad. Those are the ones that I look at. Uh, you can also look at Paperwhite, uh, Kobo devices, and Android. And I would work through each chapter to make sure that I'm happy with it. The other thing is you can also change what constitutes a chapter versus a different element in your book, which will impact on the table of contents. So I have a section here called mastery, which is actually the afterword for the book and not the final chapter. So in this case, I would just click on the cog and I would click on convert to, and I would change it to, well, actually it's the epilogue now that I think about it. So I'll change it to the epilogue and this will remove it from this section of the book uh, and it'll be something that will stand apart in the table of contents, which I can show you in a few moments. Now you may notice that there's a call to action, introduction and table of contents here, but this is actually all uh, carried over from uh, items that I'd written manually in Scrivener. So I'm gonna use the cog here on the left-hand side to change this. So you simply click on add element and you can click on add introduction. Uh, and then you can click on add element about the author. Uh, and then what I would do is I would just take this text and just paste this in here. And then I would delete this section. Uh, the references I'm also going to remove because Vellum will generate those based on the end notes. Um, and there is information about how it does that here. Uh, so then if I go over to the introduction, so this is actually here. So I'm gonna copy this across. So I'll tidy up each of the chapters and sections in the left-hand sidebar to make sure it corresponds to the structure of my book. Then I'm happy or happy with everything, I'll go over to the uh, contents section and you can see I can preview what the table of contents for the book uh, will be. Um, so basically you're gonna to have to spend about 30, maybe 60 minutes, depending on the length of your book, formatting the chapters and also for making sure the structure of your book is as you pictured it in Scrivener. So even though you can import your Word document file or other types of files, you still need to do a little bit of cleanup, but it doesn't really involve learning um, any advanced skills. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, once you've done all that, you, you can also change uh, the theme or the appearance of your book. And that's one of the other good things I like about Vellum. So to do that, you just click on this icon here and it has a couple of different types of uh, themes that you can use to change how your book appears. So you have Meridian, um, you have Edgewood, and you can see here it's changing on the right hand side. So I can preview what each one of these looks like. Uh, so this one here might be good for a sci-fi book. Uh, I like Parcel, I think that would work for uh, non-fiction. Uh, Recital will probably be good for literary fiction. Um, Trifle, maybe that would be good for something that's romance or some genre fiction, but it's up to you to really decide uh, what makes the best for your book. And there is other options with Serif, Sans Serif, uh, and so on. And if you really wanna go in into the weeds, you can actually change the individual sections of the book and how they're formatted. So you can change how the heading is formatted, the heading backgrounds, the first paragraph, uh, the paragraph the after a break, and so on. So it is giving you some of that functionality that you get from a standard uh, EPUB editor. Um, but you are constrained a little bit, I guess, to some of Vellum's templates, but they do look quite good. Um, I suppose I'd say to you as a writer, sometimes your time is better off spending improving the manuscript and getting the manuscript to a certain point and then getting it in front of readers. If you really want to go into the weeds of formatting, perhaps you're better off served investing and hiring a book cover designer. 
So I formatted uh, this book, this parenting book here a few months ago, and I'm going to open up the finished version so I can show you. Um, so it's the, here is the finished version uh, where I have everything formatted and I've picked my styles. It took me about two hours to do, and I did make some copy edits in the manuscript as well because I found some typos when I created uh, a print version and also a Kindle version to send to readers. And that's the step I'm going to show you now. So to do that, all you do is click on Generate and you select where uh, or what formats you want and you also select your print settings and vellum does have an option for large print if you click on more options so this is one of the reasons why i like vellum because you can create multiple versions of your book and you can adjust the trim size based on uh, whatever store you're publishing on um, so you will need to work with your book cover designer to give them the right information about trim sizes and also to use amazon's tool which i'll show you in a second to make sure that you have the right trim size selected for print uh, once you've completed all of that, you simply click continue, click generate, and then Vellum will export or generate a version for all of these formats that it will save into your designated uh, folder. So once Vellum has generated uh, all of the different versions, I'll just go into Finder, and then I can go into the relevant folder. And you can see here I have all the versions for Apple Books, uh, for Google Play, for Kindle, Kobo, and so on. Uh, and it's also added or generated my book cover as well. So I didn't actually show you that. So it's easy enough to add your book cover. You just click on this section here and you can add the image and you can also put in the title of your book as well. Then once you've done all that, you can get ready to publish your book on Amazon and on other bookstores. But there's a few little tips that I recommend before you take that step. The first is that the trim sizes can be a little bit confusing if you haven't published on print before. So use the cover calculator on KDP and pick your binding, what you want your interior to look like, the paper type uh, and the measurements and so on. And this will give you a template that you can give to your book cover designer and it'll also give you information that you can use to select the right settings inside of Vellum. So that only really applies, of course, if you're doing print. You don't need to worry about it if you're doing Kindle. But I do recommend you do print because print does sell quite a lot. The second thing I recommend is that you use a service like BookFunnel so you can upload the PDF and Kindle copy uh, and then you can send uh, copies to readers and then they can download copies of your book and provide you feedback before you publish it. And by readers, I mean uh, advanced reader copies or beta readers who are going to help you find and fix mistakes. Then when they point out typos and mistakes, you can go back to your volume document, edit them and then publish your book on Kindle and get better reviews. Of course, if you don't want to do that, your other option is to uh, just create other copies. Uh, and you can do that inside of Amazon as well. And then you can actually physically send or physically give the auto copy to somebody or send it to them. That's my review and tips for using Vellum. All in all, it's a fantastic uh, software for creating books for print and for Kindle. It doesn't take too long to learn. Um, unfortunately, it's not the cheapest and it's Mac only, at least for now. So if you're watching this and thinking I don't want to spend 200 plus dollars on ebook design software because I'm publishing one book or because I don't have a Mac, uh, you can use Sigil, which is another type of ebook designed software. Uh, I haven't personally used it, but other authors have recommended it to me. Alternatively, you can just find a book designer on a service like Readsy and they can take care of all of this for you. So it really depends on how much you want to be involved in the actual nuts and balls of preparing your book for self-publishing. But I continue to use Vellum and it's a good addition uh, to my self-publishing business. So hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you do, hit thumbs up. And if you want to get more video reviews of writing software like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.